Praise the Lord. Can you just one minute bow your heads and ask the Lord to take over your life and everything that concerns you? Holy Spirit, take over. That song says, take my will and make it thine. Take everything about me and make it yours. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over. Take over my life. Take over my being. Take over my will. Take over everything that concerns me. Take over my thoughts, my mind, the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart. Take complete control. Let it be no longer mine. Let it be no longer mine. Let it be no longer mine. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed can you put your hands together for the lord and for the choir make that hand clap bigger make it better make it louder i can't hear the hand clap put your hands together to the lord hallelujah now can we add a shout of praise to it somebody make a noise unto the lord hallelujah God is indeed faithful. Put your, you can be on your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I'd like to say put your hands together. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. I don't know if you're excited to be here, but I am excited to be here. Every time we come to God's presence, there's something to go home with. There's always a present in his presence. Hallelujah. This morning, we are looking at the fruit of self-control fruit called self-control i'd like to bow i'd like us to bow our heads as we pray father we thank you for this word that we're about to hear i ask that you take over my lips and these words breathe upon it and make them yours the bible says in first thessalonians it says the word will come in power and in the holy ghost and in assurance lord let nobody live here the same way they have come fill this place with your presence in the name of jesus thank you precious father we're looking at self-control a necessity for every believer and we're going to be looking at the following outlines this morning what is self-control the tragedies of the lack of self-control why is self-control necessary for every believer and they'll be going to prayers amen self-control a necessity for every believer let's open our bibles to first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and 25 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and 25 it says do you not know i'll be reading from the king james version first it says do you not know know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. If you look at the NIV version of that scripture, the NIV version of that scripture says, Know ye not that they with which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. Did you not know? No, verse 25. It says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Is temperate in all things. Um, is, is the NIV version up there? I'm trying to get the NIV version. Right. It says, everyone who competes goes into strict training strict training now the bible you know uses temperance self-control strict training interchangeably amen you can change you can use either of them amen this strict training here will refer to self-control sportsmen and athletes like paul has likened us to you know um are people who prepare themselves before 
a particular competition. You don't find a sportsman just going into a competition like that. They go into strict training. They restrain themselves from certain things. They restrain their bodies from taking certain things. And we all are running a race. Every believer, every one of us is running a race. Do you agree this morning that we are all running a race? And the Bible has taught us and told us this morning that we must apply self-control. We must exercise self-control if truly we are going to finish this race and get the prize at the end of the day. One of the benefits of the fruit of the Spirit for every believer. Now, when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we're talking about love, joy, peace, and all of that. One of the benefits is the building of godly character. We heard the choir say that this morning. It's the furnishing of godly character. Beloved, character is everything. You can have gifts and have no character. So for every gift, there must be a matching character to go with it. You can have the gift of speaking in tongues and have no love. You can have the gift of word of knowledge and have no patience. You can have the gift of word of wisdom and no kindness. So for every gift that a person has, there must be a matching character. And that's what the fruits of the spirit does to a believer. It gives you that matching character. Amen. So what, are, what is, is self-control? What exactly is self-control? Number one, self-control is the capacity to say no to the wrong appetites and desires of the flesh. The capacity to say no to the wrong appetites, the wrong desires of the flesh. Beloved, there is always a connection between sin and wrong desires. There's always a connection between sin and wrong desires. Let's see James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. I'll read the NIV version again. It says, but each one is tempted. Are you there? James 1 14 and 15. It looks like they're looking at me and not looking at their Bibles. James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. Media, can you help us? Otherwise, I'll read from here. It says, but each one is tempted when they are dragged away. You are tempted when you are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Verse 15 says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. It's in your Bible. So every time you are drawn away by your evil desires, it births sin. And after he births sin, he births death. There's always a connection between sin and wrong desires. So what is self-control? It's the capacity to say no. No, I will not go into that temptation. No, I will not follow that path. No, I will not do this. The capacity to say no to evil desires and wrong appetites. What is self-control number two? Self-control is the capacity to keep the flesh under control by the power of the spirit. To keep the flesh under control by the power of the spirit. Beloved, it is dangerous to live as a man or woman without the Holy Spirit. Too risky. Too risky. What the Holy Spirit does is that he helps you to bring yourself under check. The Bible speaking in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. Paul saying, he says, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I will not be brought under the power of any. The capacity to keep the flesh under control by the power of the spirit. The spirit of God helps you. It gives you control. It helps you stay under control. It helps you stay in check. That's what the spirit of God does to a believer. And this morning, if you're here and you, have, you don't have any relationship with the spirit of God, you will not live here without having that relationship in the name of Jesus. Amen. So self-control is keeping the spirit of God in charge of your life. Keeping the spirit of God in charge of your life and ensuring that that spirit is still in charge. Many people have lost control of themselves because there is no, the spirit of God has not taken control yet. 
They are still struggling with certain things because the Spirit of God is not in charge yet. They are still the drivers of their own lives because the Spirit of God is not in charge yet. They are still the captains of their own boat because the Spirit of God is not in charge yet. They still have their will because the Spirit of God is not in charge. That, 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 that verse in that song says, take my will. They still have their will. They can still decide and make a choice irrespective of what God or his word says because the spirit of God is not in charge yet. Outline number two, what are the tragedies of lack of self-control? What are the tragedies? We'll look at this using four scriptural examples in the Bible. What are the tragedies of lack of self-control? Beloved, the lack of self-control is behind the destruction of life the destruction of destiny and the loss of purpose. A man who lacks self-control will destroy his life, destroy destiny, and lose purpose. Amen. Let's see example number one. Esau. Esau could not control his appetite for food. He lost control of his appetite for food. Flesh told Esau, sell your birthright. You are hungry. Esau said, yes, sir. Birthright gone. Purpose lost. Because of the appetite that he could not control. Amen. He so ended without relevance because of that one act. Let's see Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. We'll see what happened to Esau. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 16 and 17. We we'll look at 16b. 16b says, Esau, who for a single muscle of bread, food, who because of food, what did he do? Sold his birthright. He sold his inheritance. And verse 17 said something very strange or striking. He says, afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with what? With tears. He could not change what he had done. Why? Because of the lack of self-control. Esau lost it all. His inheritance gone. For some of us, it might be the appetite to get, yes, the appetite to control your food, your appet the, the, the lack of self-control for appetite, for food has denied you an effective prayer life has denied you an effective spiritual life. Spiritual life dead, cold, dry, worn out, weak, because of the lack of self-control for what enters into your mouth. Fasting life dead. Prayer life dead. Prayer altar gone. Because of the lack of self-control. Beloved, I always say this, that you cannot defeat a full-time devil by being a part-time Christian. Never. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people want convenience. They want to do it their own way. God is a God of principles. And he said he will not break his word. He will not break his word. So you must follow the principles. Even Jesus, our father, fasted. He prayed. He denied himself. Praise God. So deny yourself. Deny yourself. Self-control for, for your appetite. Starve your flesh and stuff your spirit up. That's what fasting does. Fasting starves your flesh and it stuffs your spirit. People are so, you are puffed up because of the flesh. Kill your flesh by fasting. That's one way to kill it. That's one way to subdue the flesh. Kill it by fasting. Kill it by prayer. Prayer is not old school. You don't pray, you become a prey in the hands of the enemy. It's a reality, sir. It's a reality. You don't pray, you are wasted before your time. It's a reality. Number two. The tragedy of the lack of self-control. We see Gehazi in the Bible. Gehazi. 
Gehazi could not control his desire for money and materialism. He could not control his desire for money. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 20 and 27. Now, if you read the scripture, you see something very interesting. After Naaman was cleansed of leprosy, Naaman decided to offer to Elisha a gift. And Elisha said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing from you. But see what Gehazi said. Gehazi said to himself, As the Lord lives, I shall run after him and receive something from him. Did you see that? Elisha the prophet said to himself and told Naaman, I will not receive anything from you as the Lord lives. I'm not the healer. God is the healer. On the other hand, Gehazi said, as the Lord lives, I will run, I will pursue after you, Naaman, and I will collect what you want to give. And where did, where did that end Naaman? Where did that end Naaman? He became leprous. You know, somebody said that if you see people that are leprous, they are from the generation of Naaman. Um, sorry, uh, rather, Gehazi. From generation of Gehazi. That ended Gehazi as a leper. From, I mean, this was a man, you would have thought that just by following the prophet, you should have known what is right and what is wrong. Are you touch people like that? Just by coming to church, you, you would expect that they know what is right and what is wrong. Some of us are like that. But God will have mercy. He could not control his desire for money and materialism. And that ended him leprous. Beloved, avoid ungodly prosperity. Ungodly prosperity. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 11. It says, wealth gotten by vanity will diminish. Wealth gotten by wuru Wealth gotten by duping people. Riches gotten by killing people. Riches gotten by rituals. It will diminish. It will fade very quickly. First Timothy 6 10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. Beloved, it is not money that is the root of all evil. It is what? The love, the lust of it. Let's see Jeremiah 17 verse 11. I like that scripture. Jeremiah 17 verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11. Jeremiah 17 verse 11. It says, like a partridge that hatches eggs, it did not lay. And those who gain riches by unjust means. Let me read the um, K KJV version rather. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not. So he that getteth riches not by right. Shall what? Shall leave them in the... That means that the riches will be there and the person will go. Avoid ungodly prosperity. The tragedy of the lack of self-control number three. Samson. Samson. Samson could not control his flesh. Samson was a man empowered by the spirit, but dominated by the flesh. He was a man that was a, you know I said it earlier, that you can have the gifts, but there is no matching character. He was empowered by the, oh, Samson was a, was a mighty man. But look at how Samson ended. His destiny was lost. Purpose lost. What was the destiny of Samson? Let's see Judges chapter 13 verse 5. What was the destiny? What did God have in, had in mind? What did God have in mind for Samson? Every one of us sitting here, God has something. God is very intentional about you. You are not a mistake. You did not just happen. God has a purpose for your life. Where you are right now is where God wants you to be as long as you are in his will. 
Amen. Judges 13 verse 5. What was the destiny of Samson? Judges chapter 13 verse 5. All right. He says, for lo, thou shalt, this was, he was, the angel was talking to Samson's mother here. He says, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And then what happens? And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. That was what God had in mind when he created or made Samson. That was, what, that, that was the picture that God had in mind. That Samson would deliver the children of Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. But where did Samson end up? Samson ended up on the laps of a woman and eventually in the hands of the Philistines. Because of the lack of self-control. He ended up in the, on the laps of a woman and eventually in the hands of the people that he was sent to deliver the children of Israel from. Because of the lack of self-control. For some people, everything that passes in skirts is an object. Lost. Hey, you, um, you cannot... You cannot truly say that you are a believer. If you are here and you are struggling with certain things, you can live here changed. You can live here changed. You are not permitted to leave this door with that thing inside of you. That, that weakness that you are struggling with, you are not permitted to live here. Something ended up on the laps of a woman. Because of lack of self-control. The tragedy of the lack of self-control. Example number four. Moses. Moses. Moses could not control his emotions. Moses had no control over his emotions. Who was Moses? Moses was a man that spoke to God face to face. The Bible says in Exodus 33 verse 11, it says as a man speaks to his friend, that is how God was speaking to him. Imagine that kind of relationship. As a man speaks to his friend, Moses was speaking to God face to face. Who was Moses? Moses was the man that led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Moses was the man that ensured that they drowned in the Red Sea. That was Moses. Moses the deliverer. That was Moses. The destiny, the ministry, the purpose of Moses ended in just a moment of anger. Just a moment of... Somebody says, I, I, it's my weakness. Oh, she's a good person, oh, but her weakness is that she gets... It's not a weakness, so oh. deal with it now. Anger has destroyed homes. Anger has destroyed families. Anger has wasted opportunities. Because of anger, the ministry, the destiny, the purpose of Moses all went down the drain. And like he, it was like he never knew God. It was like he never knew God. You find that story in Numbers chapter 20, verse 8 to 12. Now, why is self-control important? Why is self-control important? Why should we have self-control as a believer? Number one, self-control is important because the key to self-control or the key to the control of destiny is in the control of self. The key to the control of you cannot say you have successfully controlled, you can successfully control your destiny and your life if you are, you are not putting yourself under check. Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. That's what Paul said. I bring it under subjection. I bring it under subjection. Joseph, for example, mastered the act of self-control. If Joseph had ended on the bed of Potiphar with Potiphar's wife, Joseph would have ended up a celebrated slave. If he had made that one mistake... Of ending up on the bed of Potiphar, he would have ended up a celebrated slave. 
the key to the control of destiny is in the control of self. Why is self-control important? Number two, it is the key to the preservation of life. I read somewhere that the lack of self-control can kill a man that even demons fail to kill. It's the preserve, it leads to the preservation of life. A person without self-control is defenseless, as defenseless as a city. Proverbs 25 verse 28. Proverbs 25 verse 28. That's a very popular scripture. Proverbs 25 verse 28. It says that he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. That means anything can go in and come out. He that had no control. No control. Anything goes. No control. It doesn't matter. No control. We can do it anyhow. He that hath no control over his own spirit is like a city without walls. Number three. Why is self-control important? It's important because it's the key to distinction and relevance. Self-control is the key to distinction and relevance. Daniel understood that the corrupt meal of Babylon was able to defile him. He knew that. He understood that. And what did he do? He made up his mind. The Bible says Daniel proposed in his heart. Joseph proposed in his heart. Daniel said, I will not defile myself with the king's meat. Joseph said, how can I do this wicked thing against my master? And see where they ended. The key to distinction. And the key to relevance. You see the result of Daniel in Daniel chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, he found the king, found them 10 times better. Speaking of Daniel and his brethren, 10 times better. The key to a life of distinction and relevance. Beloved, if you are ever going to matter, if we are ever going to matter in life and eternity, Self-control is crucial. Self-control is crucial. Because what you fail to deal with now will deal with you in the future. You know, a pastor said when he was ministering, he said, that weakness that you fail to deal with has the capacity to weaken your destiny. It has the capacity to weaken your future. That thing that you fail to handle now can handle your tomorrow. Whatever you fail to control now can control you tomorrow. Make up your mind to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. To put you under check. To put your life under check. For some of you it is lack of control when it comes to time. It might be as simple as that. For some, it's lack of control when it comes to your appetite for alcohol. That one does not even need control at all. Do you need control for alcohol intake? Do you need control for alcohol intake? Ask her now, do you need control for alcohol intake? Uh -uh, nobody's talking. <laughs> if you are here and you are still struggling with alcohol, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. It may be weakness of immorality. That's five minutes of pleasure. Pornography. Masturbation. Fornication. Cheating. Lying. If you don't control it now, it has the capacity to ruin your destiny. Our destinies will not be ruined in the name of Jesus. You're going to bow your heads and talk to the Lord. I'm done. Talk to the Lord and ask him for grace. Father, I ask you for grace. Grace to bring my body under subjection. You have heard the teaching on the first Sunday. You heard the teaching on the second Sunday. You've heard the teaching on, on, on self-control now. The grace to bring my body under subjection. For somebody here, you need to pray and say, Father, save me from myself. Save me from myself. Save me from myself. 
This is another opportunity to deal with that thing. Deal with it now. Bring it before the altar. Deal with it now. Lord, save me from myself. This thing that wants to destroy me, save me from it. The helper is here now. The Holy Spirit is the helper. He's here. He can help you. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, I'm at the door. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. Will you open your heart and let him in? Will you allow Jesus to take control of your life? Will you allow Jesus to take absolute control of your life? Save me from myself. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed. If you know that you are here, you've heard my voice. You've heard this teaching. You've, you've listened to the verses. You've seen the examples. And there's something that you are struggling with. All eyes closed, all head bowed. There's something that you are struggling with. It's between you and God. There's something that you are struggling with. And you want God to help you. Or perhaps you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You're here, just lift your hands wherever you are. It's a matter of destiny now. Just lift your hands wherever you are. You want to rededicate your life. There's something that you are fighting with. Nobody knows it. Only you know it. Beloved, you can deceive everybody else, but you can't deceive Jesus. Now stand to your feet and let us pray together. Just take that bold step of faith and be on your feet. Take that bold, don't be ashamed. Take that bold step of faith and be on your feet. Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you helpless as I am. Only you can help me. Forgive me. Give me the grace to live for you. Give me the grace to live for you, Jesus. From today, I decide and make up my mind that it is forward ever with you and backward never. Give me grace to bring my body under subjection as I trust you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you for the lives of your children. I ask for grace upon their lives. Grace to live the God kind of life. Release it upon them right now. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Everybody be on your feet as we welcome our pastor. Can we just put our hands together? Let's celebrate Jesus. Everybody, you see, the issue that has been taught or that has been taught this month is the issue of destiny. Despite the fact Judas Iscariot followed Jesus, others were listening to training, but it was like it doesn't matter. We saw where it ended. I want you to pray that Father and begin to tell the Lord that Father, give me the grace to live by the Spirit. Can you lift up your voice and just ask the Lord for it? We've been listening to a lot of teachings. The first teaching for this month was edit. We heard about love last week Sunday. We are talking about self-control this Sunday. We've talked about long suffering as well during the Bible study. We talked about gentleness during the Bible study. Please talk to the Lord our Father. Help me to live according to your spirit. Give me that grace. Give me that grace. I refuse to be wasted. Weakness will not deal with me. I choose to deal with the weakness today. Please talk to the Lord. How wonderful it will be if the church is filled with men who are led and by the spirit. Men who displays the fruits of the spirit father give me that grace in jesus mighty name we have prayed i pray that the grace be released upon your lives oh let your amen be loud i pray the grace is released upon your lives in the mighty name of jesus i also pray for the vessel the lord has used to minister to us greater grace and fresh unction in jesus mighty name we've prayed Celebrate Jesus.